today, it's a very, very important one to understand the safety measures that the unit has in place to prevent the unit from having an issue if you're charging it from the regulated input. So the red area here is the only place you're going to be charging it from. So what would happen is if you overcharge the unit, it will actually have a shutdown mechanism in place. We're going to show you how that works. If you don't read the instructions, you're not going to know how to reset it. And then you're going to have a unit that will not charge under any circumstance. The way I've got this set up at the moment is I actually have an inverter sitting here. It's a 600 watt inverter. And I've got the AC-DC charger plugged in. And it shows me it's, it's, shows me it's putting out 12.6 volt from the charger. So the inverter is taking, is taking its uh, 12 volt from the battery, turning it to 240, and I'm plugging my AC-DC charger that I normally plug into the house, and I can use that to charge it. So to make sure it's charging, I'm just going to plug it in. Okay, so as you can see, the red light's on, it's charging. Now what I want to explain is that if it's charging from that, to, uh, from that inverter, if I pull this out of the inverter, it will now also be able to be charged... Uh, from the 240 so I'm doing this for a reason which will be apparent shortly so I plug to 240 okay out of the charge exactly the same as was coming out of the battery car battery through the inverter plug it into here it's now charging okay the unit doesn't have to be on it can be off and it's still charged that's fine okay let's put it on anyway so I'll just take these loads off and I'll show you why in a moment. So this is charging. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to overload this unit. And it's something I don't want you to do. I'm connecting this directly to the crank battery of this car. Now I know because I've been testing it, it'll put out 60 amp, no problem. I've got this with a direct connection with no fuse in it. And I'm going to connect into the red Anderson input. And this is what a lot of people are doing, assuming that it's, uh, it's okay because the alternator is going to regulate it. This has a maximum input of 25 amp. If you exceed that, it's going to shut down. And it'll keep shutting down as long as it exceeds 25. If you take the load off, it's just not going to, it's not going to reset by itself. And we're going to go through that in a second. So I'm going to turn the vehicle on, um, and then I'm going to show you, because I'm going to put the, the, uh, the watt meter, amp meter on it. So I'm going to put that through source. Like so. We'll turn the car on, and then we'll have a look at what it does. Okay, so the car's running now, and if I look at my meter, it's showing 14 and a half volt coming out of the car, because I had it running before, so it'll start off slowly, by then it'll be 12.73 and going up. So if I put this into the input now, watch what happens. Watch the screen here. You see how it went up? 12.6, trying to go on. That was going up, tried to get up to 60 amp. It went to 30, 35, okay, and now it won't take a charge. Now that the unit is shut down, there is no possible way that this will take a charge. I'll plug it back in now. It's not charging. Now if I pull this out, and I plugged in a solar panel from here, it still won't charge because it's shut down at the BMS or the CPU if you want to call it. So the, the, tech, the technical aspect of it. If you plug a solar panel unregulated to here, it still goes through the same BMS. So it will, under no circumstance, take a charge. So the reason I want to point that is now, just to prove the point, is that, is that if I take my 240, so my AC-DC charger, and I plug it into my house right now, if I plug it into here, it still won't take charge. It still won't take charge. The same as, if I take this charger and plug it into the inverter, charge light's on, so it's charging. If I plug this into the Nomad, Guess what? No charge. So there is no circumstance that you can be saying that, well, I was charging it from the inverter before, it's not charging from the inverter now, it's not charging from the solar panel, regulated or unregulated, and there is no way that if you take this out and plug this into a 240, think it's going to work? 
think again. There's no possible way that it'll work because this will shut down and not reactivate until it's been rebooted. If you don't read the instructions, you're not going to know how to do it. The only, there is a way around it, which is completely prohibited. You put it through the output, you're running a massive risk. You've got to remember the amount of current that's coming out of that, for example, into there from a vehicle, you're going to cause permanent damage to the unit, void your warranty, and you can have a lot, a lot more bigger problems than that. So do not ever plug it into the output under any circumstance. To reset this is actually quite simple. You just take the charger off. You don't even have to take the charger off. But what I'm going to do is put is draw from the unit. We say in the instruction, draw more than an amp out of it because it depends on the state of voltage that's in the unit as to when it's going to reset. But if you pull an amp out of it, a couple of USBs, a light strip or something like that, that should be enough to reset it. So now, in theory, this is reset. So let's plug it in again now. What do you know? It charges. Guess what? If I take this out now, and plug it into that inverter that wasn't working before, guess what? It's working again. So if somebody has a fault with the unit and rings us up and doesn't give us the correct information, it's very hard for us to, to, to just give you a real simple quick answer how to reset it. So this is one of those things that if I ask numerous, numerous questions and you don't tell me you've overloaded it, we're going to go around in circles, okay? And it's as simple as that to reset it. But what you don't want to do is have a load on it, and this happens when you've got 25 amp DC DCs or 30 amp, they actually charge higher than 25, they might go 27, and you might have a fridge plugged in. So guess what this will do? This will go red, off, red, off, red, off, because guess what? It's actually resetting. Okay, it's kicking over again, it's going over voltage, it's protecting itself, shutting down. So let's do it again, just to show you if I wanted to do this, is let's take the charger out, let's hit it again from the alternator directly. Okay, it's clicking back on again, see this? Splashing. And you can hear the engine ticking over. That's really bad and that will fail and have a permanent shutdown, which means you will not be able to charge it at all. And then that's actually completely a BMS replacement because what I was doing then, it was going 30 amp, dropping off, and it was resetting. 30 amp, kicking off, 30 amp, reset. So again, if you use common sense, if it shuts down and does this, you say, well, what have I done to it? I put too much current in. So that's just showing you that if you do this and you keep trying to charge it in the, the car, for example, directly from there, I can plug this in now, it's gonna cut out anyway because the load's gonna kick off, dots back down here. All right, it went up, back down. Doesn't matter now, it's not gonna take charge. Let's pull it out again. Let's show you, uh, plug the AC-DC in again. It's charging, okay. It won't take charge until it's been reset. You can leave it for two days, it's still not going to work. It has to be reset, take it out, put a one amp load on it, like so. Plug my charger in again, it's charging. So please understand the importance of reading the instructions. The instructions are clear about an overload. If it's an overload, it's something you've done wrong. So it gives you an opportunity to not do it again. If you continue to do it, you're gonna damage the unit. And you don't wanna be doing this when you're out in the bush. And I just wanted you to understand the relationship between an inverter and the 240. As far as the AC-DC is concerned, it's exactly the same thing. So as you can see, there's no circumstance that it, it won't, there's no circumstance that it won't be working on the inverter. It won't be taking input from the solar. It won't be taking input on the regulated solar because it all goes through the same mechanism. There's no way that if I plug it into the 240, if that shut, then it will take a charge. It's just not technically or electrically possible. So again, that's an overload reset. Don't do it. Follow the instructions, look at the loads, and again, with confidence, you'll know that this thing will shut down as long as you always plug things into the input. So again, if you've got any further questions on that, but again, don't use this as, a, as a, an instruction to direct connect to the vehicle. Do not connect directly to the vehicle under any circumstance. You need to have a DC-DC in there. Hope you can hear me over the top of the vehicle, but uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.